Hello and welcome to another tutorial in C Sharp. And in this tutorial, I'm just going to go over uh, a little bit more on switch switch, uh, switch structures, and then we're going to learn about arrays, how to declare them, and how to change the values. Uh, someone's talking to me on Skype. I'll talk to them later. But right now, let's talk about strings. Okay. So we have a string, right? Switch structures can also work with strings. So instead of typing in numbers, we can actually type in words. Attack, defend, or run. So if we run this now, we can actually type in what we want to do instead of typing in a number. And it's going to work just like an integer would, except it's using strings. You defeated. You defended. Yay, okay. Ran, run. Yay. Okay, so that all works. I hope it's pretty simple. I'm just going to. I'm not going to go over this too much. So that's basically what it is. I hope this is pretty self explanatory. And uh, I'm going to get, move on to a race now. Okay, arrays. So arrays is just basically a list of information. So I can create an integer array. Int array equals new int array. What am I doing? There we go. So this might look sort of confusing to you right now, but it actually isn't. So what we're doing here is we're telling them we're telling C sharp we want to make it integer and it's going to be an array it's going to be an array so an array can hold like many values I'll show you just in a second so this is how you declare an array you just put whatever type and you put like these two square brackets it can be any type it could be a string it could be an int whatever you want okay so we're just going to create an integer array and we're going to create a new one we're just telling them we want we want to make a new instance of an array and it's going to be a type integer again, I know. It's sort of redundant, but we have to constantly remind them, C sharp, what we want it to do. And it's going to be, it's going to have five um, places in that array where we can store things in. Okay? So imagine a bookshelf. We're making a bookshelf that can hold numbers, and it's going to have five slots for us to put numbers in. We can hold five different numbers, basically. Now, what we can do is we can say int array. 0 equals 5 int array oops 1 equals 6 and etc we can do it 0 through 4 so uh, the things with arrays is there's five items in our book, so called bookshelf or array uh, oops I skipped a number 2 3 4 but as you notice our number doesn't go up to five. That's because it creates five slots where we can put things, but arrays start at zero, not at one. So that's why we can um, we call the index of zero, and it only goes up to four. There is five slots, however, so we can all, all assign these different values, and they'll all store different things, right? So this is how we access each individual slot in that bookshelf. To access the first slot, we ax we put zero in. To access the second slot, we put in one. There can't be negative indexes. That doesn't work, okay? So don't try that. And we can't access anything outside of what we said. So if we built a bookshelf that could only, ha uh, only carry five books, then, or five numbers, and we try to put a six number in it, it's not going to work. <laughs> that book is going to drop to the ground. Or basically, it's going to crash. So if we try that right now, we're going to see that this is going to crash. And yeah, index was outside the bounds of array. Basically, it can't hold, it couldn't hold it. If we take this out, we should be good. Okay, uh, let me just see something. Real. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I had to uh, talk to someone real fast. And if we, why don't we go ahead and write out all these values? 
That's right. Uh, index zero is equal to int array index zero. Okay, and we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it four more times, right? So we can see all the values so I can prove to you that I'm not lying, I'm telling the truth, it does work, I know what I'm talking about, okay? See, just like how I said it would. The first index equals five, second one equals six, third one equals two, fourth one equals eight, and fifth one equals 10. And uh, same thing with strings and things like that. So those are our arrays. Uh, you'll see how they get more useful in the future. I'm just gonna show you a couple more ways how you can declare them. Well, another way we can declare them, instead of saying new int array five or whatever we want, however big we want to make it, we can say, oh, I want the int array to carry this many numbers. So build it so it can fit, fit this many numbers. So I want to carry seven, I want to carry two, I want it to carry eight, I want it to carry th four, okay? So build it as big, uh, big enough so it can hold these numbers basically, but not uh, bigger than that. So what it will do is it will make an array that can hold four numbers and it's going to set this one to index zero, set this one to index one, two, and three. And uh, we can call these again by saying index zero. Yeah, we're just going to call these again and you'll see what happens. Two, three, one, two, three. Go run this, and as you can see, it's in the same order that we declared it in. So those are arrays. Hope you learned something. These will become much more useful in the future once we learn what loops are. So hope you enjoyed these tutorials. Leave a like rating, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.